All right, we're back talking golf. PGA Tour, another stop, signature event, Genesis Invitational. And, of course, we're going to give our picks, our analysis, and one-and-done options between myself, Jared Smola, and Hall of Famer Jan Stevenson. Before we do that, though, I want to start the broadcast off with uh, this little clip from last week. The, the, the guy the guy that pops to me, and you you mentioned him a few minutes ago, on that showing right now at 150 is is, is nick taylor oh He's yeah in the mix sure here and it's is just is just playing good golf you know won, won a won a tournament last year so i think i think nick taylor at 150 i think that that's too long for him yeah that's uh because uh, maybe he just wasn't very good at this golf course because he just wasn't all that very good <laughs> up until uh last year i think that's right i think that all right so yeah we did talk about the winner <laughs> That was actually up to 170 to 1 uh, on last week's show. And a matter of fact, uh, let's also check out, this is another reason why you want to uh, subscribe and follow uh, Jared at Smola Golf Bets because you can see here, this is Jared's final card. Uh, this is uh, Saturday. Here you see this Saturday night, excuse me, Wednesday night, February 7th. So he puts out his final card for the week. And here are his, uh, of course, these are all the big bargains here. Uh, and then look at this one, by the way, Cameron Young, who almost did it, uh, had a really good yeah. showing. <laughs> and then Nick Taylor at the bottom at 170 to 1. So uh, awesome job, uh, Jared. And uh, this is why, even though this wasn't in your picks, this is why we always talk about this. It's not always about our picks of the week. It's about breaking down other key players, other long shots, which we talked about towards the end of the show. Uh, which is why you got to listen and watch the entire show because we talk about a lot of different players to keep an eye on, including Nick Taylor last week. Yeah, Nick Taylor was the last bet I made last week. It was um, Wednesday night, um, and, and you know, honestly, I liked him. You know, like we said on the show, he he's had a good start to the season. He won a tournament last year. He had played well here last year. Honestly, though, if Nick Taylor was 90 to one, I probably wouldn't have bet him. But, you know, 170 to one, it was just it was a value play. That's kind of what, I, what I'm about with my golf bets. You know, I, I, we look at the numbers, we break all this stuff down. But in the end, I'm just trying to find guys who I think are undervalued. And I thought Nick Taylor at 170 to one was just a good value. Um, and we finally finally found a hot putter. I feel like you know, none of oh. the guys I'd bet on so far this season had, had been the hot putter that you, you, you kind of need to win a golf tournament. Nick Taylor was definitely that. Um, he ended up gaining 8.9 strokes putting <laughs> last week, which was the best putting performance of his career. The second best putting performance of his career came last year at the Waste Management. So he obviously likes those greens. Um, I'm sure he will not be 170 to 1 when he comes back next year. No. And remember, what we talked about was that, and what I mentioned at the very end, because we didn't, uh, show the earlier clip when we when I was going through some of the long shots and when we uh, brought up Taylor at the beginning, we mentioned that he had done he was really bad for the first like six or seven trips that he that he that he took to Phoenix to this uh, TPC Scottsdale uh, uh, event until last year when he uh, was second place and was right there at the end and then that's why we mentioned um, how you got to not really count what he did before that because last year of course was the year he broke out winning the canadian open which happened later in the year this was just the beginning of what was to come um i'm i'm actually a little surprised he's he's not more consistent because especially after what we saw on on uh late on sunday because and what we saw in canada he is just clutch i mean yeah, with yes. that potter uh, it's just <laughs> it's amazing he's just not a better more consistent player yeah man he was he was walking those putts in from from five feet out you know they were dead center he was walking them. i was i was going crazy that was that was a fun, obviously a fun uh it, it was it was the best i think it was the best sunday of the season so far regardless of you sure know, if you had someone in the mix i thought it was just it was just good golf and obviously having taylor in the mix too man i i was all over that leaderboard you mentioned uh you know cam young being in the mix for a while Wyndham clark was in the mix for a while Sahit Tagala was like the last guy off my card. Um, so for a lot of the week, I was just dreading a, a Sahith win because I didn't end up betting him. I came close to. 
about him this week. We'll, we'll talk about that in a bit here. But, um, yeah, I feel like uh, I was dialed in. I, I like uh, kind of the numbers I've put together for that tournament. So ex- excited for the waste management uh, next year. I think we can potentially hit another winner. And, by the way, uh, I, I, once again, a winner that nobody – I mean, from left field. Yeah. This yep. is just amazing. I mean, we well, I'll tell you what, if – if Charlie Hoffman had won, I mean, yes, <laughs> that 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 would have been the biggest surprise all, all season to me so far, because that guy has been nowhere near a leader no. for, for years. Now he he's played waste. I, I looked at this uh, on Sunday night after after the tournament. He you know, Hoffman's played waste management fifteen or so times, and he has a lot of made cuts, a lot of like finishes around like twentieth to thirtieth. But he, he even there, he's never really been in contention. No. Uh, that was and how well he i mean he 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 deserved to win that as much he as did. taylor did yeah right? I mean, they both hit some awesome shots on the stretch taylor just made you know one more putt than hoffman did yeah hoffman needed that one more birdie late and he just couldn't get it to to widen the gap and you got to get because but and nick taylor also he he didn't birdie the 17 he birdied 16 which is not easy to do and then he, an 18 yeah and 18 so he, he did didn't, it the hard way he didn't birdie he didn't birdie 13 on the back nine either on Sunday, the other par five. Wow. But when he when he didn't birdie that, I kind of thought he was done. Um, and then even on 15, the you know the other par five on the back, the one where you got to you know carry the water on the side, he, he laid up on his That's second right. shot. Which That's I, right. That's yes. right. I was not happy about. I was like, come on, his his wedge to two feet, and I you know it's a good decision, Nick. He does know what he's doing, so. Well, that'll be something that they'll be they'll be able to talk about now in the future. Is that not only Nick, but as they referenced Ricky doing the same thing when he won. So, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes uh, yep. sometimes it works, and you know, it's not about chickening out. It's about just that's if, if, look everybody every player is yeah. different. You also have a feel for how your how, how your swing is at that point, and you know, look. At the, you just do what you got to do and you don't worry about the outside noise so yeah. and, and where that pin was on uh sunday on 15 you saw a bunch of guys just throwing it you know 20 feet past the pin and getting the spin back and it kind of just settled uh right near the hole so obviously it was it was a good decision by by taylor and his caddy all right so now on next week's show uh, we are going to which is a good uh, uh promo for next week's show because it's mexico so it's going to be, I mean, I can imagine who's going to be there. It's probably going to be Tony Finau and nobody else. Yep. So, uh, yeah, it, this is going to be a really weak week, uh, probably the, 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 the worst week maybe of the season, to tell you the truth, outside of having to deal with the, the team crap in, uh, in New Orleans. <laughs> but uh, for, like, actual singles, this has got to be the worst week coming up next week. So we're going to use that week. Uh, to uh, we're gonna have a, a segment where we're gonna take a look at all the majors coming up this season because I've already we've already talked about it we've already started to place bets on futures on the majors so uh, I, we're gonna take a look at the venues and let you know in advance uh, obviously we know about Augusta which we'll be able to kind of just give you a little brief overview of you know the players that play pretty well at Augusta but then we'll take a look at those other three venues at the majors this year and try to give a little bit of an early idea of which type of player will play well at those events so you know I'm going to leave that to that. you that's your job <laughs> so yeah um, now of course we can't do anything about who's hot because that's the trick about futures, but we can tell you about how to maybe take advantage of players. And look, no, we're not telling you to bet anybody that's 15 to one or 20 to one. You don't touch that crap. Uh, but there, there are going to be some decent options, uh, maybe even starting with Justin Thomas at 25 to one in some of these events, but 35, 40, 50, 60, 80, 100 to one, those guys that might, hey, you know what? If they have a good year, if they have a good season, those odds are going to come down. This is a good venue for them. So uh, we'll talk about that on next week's show. Right. Yeah. M- more often than not, the uh, odds are better week of than these future markets for the majors. Now, there are exceptions, I think, like you're alluding to. You know, sometimes the books are sleeping on a guy who is playing well and they just don't adjust his odds. You can find those. But more often than not, I, you know, I don't I don't make a ton of future bets. I generally wait till the week of. But every so often, you know, I mentioned in last week's show, I did bet Will Zale Torres for the Masters already at, you know, uh, 40 or 42 to 1, which I think, you know, week of, if he continues to trend in the right direction, he's going to be lower than that. Yep. All right. 
let's now uh, get into this week's signature event. So another signature event. And unfortunately, the first signature event, we did not have a final round. So that is, that is important to note because we have no idea if Wyndham and Clark coming up to 60 would have been able to put together a really good... Because, look, prime example, Nick Taylor. Prime example. Nick Taylor shoots a 60, and what did he basically even par? Uh, the next the, round. On, the, on the same day, which on is the same crazy day. To me. So it's not like he why, had why? the. Yeah, I, yeah. I, we talked about that uh, <laughs> after it happened. Hey, I was I was like, yeah. don't you think this might be an advantage for Nick that he doesn't yeah. have to sleep on this? Yeah. It I, wasn't. It, it went, yeah, when, when golfers shoot a low score and they have to come back the next day, they almost always, you know, not necessarily implode, but are just, just okay. I, th- I thought Nick Taylor might be able to, um, you know, string another good round together. He comes out on one on, on his second round on the same day and goes OB on his first tee. <laughs> it's like, wait <laughs> a like, second. Well, I mean, that's, it's, it's so crazy how these golfers can't string like two excellent rounds together, even on the same day. But Yeah. So uh, that's uh, very interesting. And again, that's why we have no idea who would have won that event. Uh, but this week's event um, actually has the second most uh, winner purse money for uh if you can capture the genesis at four million dollars it's second behind yes. the players which is at 4.5 million so this week's winner is gonna get four million dollars yeah and i i tweeted this and i i hadn't even realized it until my, my buddy actually pointed it out um because th- this is new for this year but i think the total the total prize pool for all the sign- uh, signature events are the same but for genesis Arnold Palmer and Memorial, it's four million to the winner. First, I think it's three point six million to the winner in the other signature event. So they're they're just giving more to the winner in those three. So um, why do you, you think know, that from is? From a one and done, it's it, they, I, I read an article on it. It's the the player sponsored signature event. So like this this uh, event is is sponsored by Tiger. Memorial is what Jack, Jack Nicholas. Um, Okay. I'm not sure what I mean. I guess API is a uh, Arnold Palmer still. So it's those three events um, just ha- have a higher first place price. So like you said, other than players, this is the most money you're going to get for a winner. So um, don't be afraid to use. I think even Scheffler and, and Rory are in play this week. Yep. You can go right up to the top of the board because of, because of the price the price That's distribution. It. Yep, even though it's early and you kind of feel, well, I'm going to use them up early. And, hey, if, if you think your player's playing well, if you think this is a good yep. venue for them, you know that the players know that too. That's the deal. That's the whole point is that you know the players know, wait a second, that I can make that much money, which is the second most I can make behind the TPC. Well, I'm going to look at this as one of the biggest events of the year for me. So, absolutely. Okay. Interesting format this week too um with, with with 70 players but there is a cut they're going to cut down to 50 it's you know after round two it's top 50 or if you're within 10 strokes of the lead which is basically what they also do at the masters okay um so you know despite the fact that it's a, a small field there is going to be a cut this week yeah they didn't have a cut at pebble so i don't understand oh. why they make these decisions and i i think i i think i read that Ty, tiger wanted there to be a cut oh and i guess tiger, wants tiger wants cut. yeah if Tiger wants her to be a cut, there's going to be a cut. You know, the funny hopefully, thing is... Hopefully he makes the cut. <laughs> the funny thing is, is that of all the events for Tiger to enter, you yeah. like, why this event? <laughs> he's I, never he, won this. Yeah. Is that a reason? I mean, I don't know. He, he's been runner-up twice, even though one of them was not at Riviera. And he's, he hasn't played since Hero. And that was the first event he played since withdrawing from the Masters and taking all that time off with the health issues. So, wow. Uh, I'm sure he's got reasons. Probably sponsor-related reasons, I would think. Well, yeah, again, I mean, it's, it's his. You know, he, He's like the official host of the yeah. tournament. Or I'm not sure you know, why that became the case. One of the only he – sh- he should be the host at uh, Torrey Pines because that's yes. the course he always dominated. Yeah. I'm not sure how he ended up as the host here, but right? that's where we're at. Okay. So let's take a look at – stats i'm gonna pop them up here on the screen i'm gonna go back here okay because i just noticed that uh, nobody could hear either one of us if i do that i haven't i didn't set it up right okay but anyway they could see the stats so let's talk about those stats which i just flashed on the screen 
And of course, we're always going to flash the stats of the, the course history over the last five years. And then uh, this week, you added the top 10 on par fours between 450 and 500 yards with difficult to hit fairways over the last 12 months. Why did you pick this stat? Yeah, a bit more specific than we usually get for the key stats. But I did look at this, and, and you know, most of the guys have um, you know 20 to 30 rounds that qualify under these conditions. So I think it's still a big enough sample to be something useful to look at. So, I mean, the, the two, to me, defining characteristics of Riviera are the fairways are, I think, second or third most difficult to hit on tour. And then these longer par fours six of the par fours fall between this 450 to 500 yard range and i think that's kind of where you have to hold on just you know make, make pars on those holes and you attack the par fives attack the shorter par four so i did want to look at um just who, who's best on these longer par fours on courses where you're going to be playing out of the rough quite often you see the list here it's a lot of big name players yeah. i think um a couple of the guys in the bottom of the top 10 that stick out step straka Seth Tagala, Wyndham Clark, who you can argue are becoming big name players. Um, Adam Scott, who I'm sure we'll talk about, who has just been awesome here. Um, but there, there's the top 10 as far as uh, long, long par fours with tough to hit fairways. You know, the other stat that I didn't go deep into, I leave that up to you. But the one thing I did notice is that most of the players that win here have a power game. The, yes. They're, they're, it doesn't yep. mean you can't win if you're like Colin Morikawa because he's played well here over the last couple of years, but it's just a lot harder. And I mean, you can go back to the days of Bubba winning and Dustin Johnson and JB Holmes. I mean, it's a, it was really, I mean, big time with the power yep. hitters and it still, it's, it still remains the same. I mean, look, Max Homa, not a major power hitter, but bottom line is you want to be, 300 or over on your dry average yeah. driving distance to win here and the more power you have seems to seems to be better and um and that's something to keep an eye on yeah totally and, and that that speaks to these long par fours right when you're getting to par fours that are close to 500 yards you want to be a long hitter um driving distance is part of my model this week it's not always but it is it's not a huge part but it is something i looked at so i i, I totally agree i think um you know shorter players can can do well here it's just, it's just tougher so i think if you're you know, looking for a tiebreaker you, you want a bomber at this course now i'm gonna uh th th actually no i don't have the, this, the the trends to pop up but i'm gonna go over some of the key trends so let's just again uh go over the fact that this is going to be at riviera country club they played this they've hosted the event 59 times uh, the only two times since 1973 that they didn't host it was in 98 and 83 um it's a very tough golf course in general, but interesting. The last two years, the winning scores under par were 19 and 17. And I, and, I, and looking back, it, it ended up being the, or right now it's been the, 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 the combined uh, lowest winning scores ever at Riviera, the 19 and 17. Now, I don't know if this is a trend. I don't, I don't, because of the fact that the players are better and they hit longer. And we yeah. just talked about the, the length is, is an important deal here. And I wonder whether they're not, they're going to try to toughen the course up just even a little bit more. So it doesn't get into the twenties. Cause you don't want it. Cause I, I can't imagine that the, that this, the, yeah. the, the history of this golf course being a tough golf course that they want anybody close to 20 under par, which they've, you know, t uh, tickled with the last uh, couple of years. So, yeah, I think, I think it's just, I think it's just players getting better. That's why, that's why they're having the whole, you know, ball rollback thing going on. Cause guys are just getting too long. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's I, I, I love this course that there, there's no water on the course though. So like, I guess the, the best defense they have is growing up the rough. I'm not sure if they're, they're planning on doing that, but yeah, it's just, it's, it's a course where you kind of have to have everything working because again, the fairways are tough to hit. The greens are, are tough to hit, so you got to have a good short game. You know, the, the green complexes are very tricky. It's you know we're back on, you know, true POA green, so they get they get bumpy. They're kind of tricky greens to put. I actually looked at who the best putters were on these greens specifically this week, just just because I think they're so tricky and so unique that I I, I want to um, bet on guys who one have seen these greens and and two ideally have have putted well on them.
Well, yeah, because uh, that leads to an important trend, and that is that the last, excuse me, the last 11 first-time winners made an average of 6.9 appearances before winning, or it, yep. when they won. So that was basically their seventh appearance average when they won, and that includes 13th appearance, 10th appearance, 9th appearance, 8th appearance. So there's a lot of that going on. Now the last three were five, four, and five, so it has, you know, shrunk a little bit. But even uh, that, even, even that's, you know, significant experience on the course. Yep. Adam Scott, the last to win in his first appearance. That was back in 2005. And he was also the last to win here, making less than three appearances. Of course, his first. Uh, six of the last 13 winners ranked outside the top 90 before winning, including 224, 241, and 297. So you do want to keep that in mind, even though, again, now it's a signature event. Yep. I wouldn't look too much into that, except to tell you that, especially after what we've seen already this year, <laughs> anybody can win. So, you know, maybe the 65th out of the 70th player could win this week. Um, John Robb, by the way, when he won last year, he became just the second player to win um, this event uh, coming in with a win already on the season. Mike Weir did it back in 2003. Now, this is an early event. So, but it's still kind of interesting that mm -hmm. uh, you have to go back to Mike Weir in 2003. He was the last one before Rom did it who had actually won. But don't have to worry about kind of this year because of everybody who, who's, who's registered a, a win on the PGA Tour this year. Uh, <laughs> these guys are not winning a second event. Uh, I, that, that'll really be crazy. Um, and the last eight winners were already PGA Tour winners before uh, getting the win here. So keep that in mind. Um, combination maybe of experience at the tough course. And also, hey, you know, you, you've already, you know how to win. You've got to win on the PJ Tour. This isn't new. But I don't know. That could be broken this uh, this week. Uh, it's very possible. You never know. Uh, there are a couple of guys out there that still haven't won on the PJ Tour uh, that are very, very qualified to, to, to break that trend. Okay, so let's get into it. And uh, let's see the odds. Where are we? So Scotty Scheffler, once again, is the uh, overwhelming. Uh, he's the overwhelming favorite at six to one, six fifty to one, as you can see there. Okay, this is DraftKings, and you go down Rory. There's the gap to ten to one, and you got Hovland and Schauffele in the same old. You know everybody, everybody there. As I go through here. Let's see anybody that sticks out. Odds wise, I'm just going to throw out some that uh, I think are a little bit. Eh. Sam Burns, twenty to one. You know, that's a little yeah. low. Adam Scott, as we're going to talk a lot about him. <laughs> Unfortunately, his odds have dropped to twenty eight to one. Uh, then you get some bonus odds. You know, Wyndham Clark is still thirty five to one. Matt Fitzpatrick, Cam Young are thirty five to one. Zalatoris is fifty to one. Jason Day's fifty to one, so uh, here we get some other. Here we get some of the other Straka you mentioned in one of your stats. He's eighty to one. Uh, let's see anybody else that sticks out here. We got some long shots, obviously, that we're going to go over later. Ricky's just off to an awful start. He's at a hundred and thirty to one. You know when he doesn't play well at Phoenix, that he is struggling. Tiger at a hundred and eighty to one in his first go around uh, for 2024. So there you go. Now let's uh, break into it and uh, we're going to get our one and dones too. And uh, by the way, Jan's one and dones, I already have hers. So uh, she, she actually gave four this week. So she is still uh, trying to figure out which one or two she's going with. I'm not sure if she has two contests. Uh, we only have one, but Jan is breaking it down to Max Homa, uh, Kurt Kitayama, who I picked up on our fantasy league this week, uh, Scott uh, Xander Schauffele or Adam Scott. So those are her four options for one and done. Let's uh, go through the field now. All right, so let's start at the top with the three, Scheffler, McElroy, Hovland. And if I'm going to pick one of these three, to tell you the truth, I might go with Hovland. 
I'm definitely not taking Rory. I'm just until Rory wins early and plays well early <laughs> on the PG Tour. I just why should I take him? Once again, he yeah. comes out of the gate at Pebble and is 66. Well, that was so weird too because he gets off to such a great start at Pebble. He was okay. the leader at like five under, six under early on, and then you know you blink and he's even par. And he it just it was incredible how quickly things changed. He he he's he's got three top tens here. He's got four top twenties. Two top fives, but he's never won. And then Scheffler has played here five times. He's never had a top five. Uh, Hovland, meanwhile, has three top 20s out of three uh, three trips. Two of those are top fives. And I'm getting tw- uh, 14 to one, almost d- double, actually, of Scheffler. That's why if I'm taking one of those three, I would just take Hovland. I'm not taking any of the three, yeah. but I would take Hovland. Yeah, I didn't seriously consider any of these three guys. Um, Scheffler, the putter continues to be I mean, he's super frustrated about it. you could see it he, he let out a big f-bomb one of those days at waste management after he missed a short one and he actually ended up gaining strokes putting for the week at waste management but, but doesn't he always he, he missed at waste management uh, no yeah waste management yes yeah um he, he just he missed too many putts on on sunday so it's tough to bet someone at that number um when you, when you, when you don't trust the putter victor hovland's worries me because he struggled at pebble and then he withdrew from waste management and I, there was i don't think he said if there was a report that he withdrew to like you know, kind of like go go back and work on his game um so you know maybe maybe he figured something out maybe he comes out firing on thursday we'll see if i had if i had to pick one of these three i i would lean towards rory at the number i know pebble beach was disappointing i think pebble beach is, is not the best course for his game i think this course is nice for his game um you know with the driving distance with the longer irons that you need. Um, so I, if you made me pick one, it'd be Rory, but I don't like any of these three guys at their numbers. All right. And then uh, we've got Shoffley, Thomas, Morikawa at 16 to one. And uh, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and flash our picks because we're going to start. All right. So there were our picks. So uh, Justin is at the top of your list. Uh, and why not? Uh, he's been the hot name on this uh, channel uh, since we started talking uh, about the 2024 season at Sony, uh, even though he didn't play it. But he's 16 to one, just like Morikawa and Shafle. Uh He's continuing to be uh, hot. Seven straight top 12s, four of those top fives. He just needs to have just that one round that just puts him over the top he needs that 60 he needs that 62 he needs that something that just puts him at top of the leaderboard so he could stay there he needs the one hot putting round which you know we saw wyndham clark used to win we saw nick taylor have multiple hot putting rounds to win last week um yeah you know nothing thomas did last week would put me off him like you said he finished 12th he gained across the board he did actually gain putting not not by a lot but he did he was seventh best in that field tee to green so the driver and the irons remained really good you know if you just look at strokes gain total for this year in 2024 he's second best in the field scotty scheffler is first justin thomas is second and then thomas's last six appearances at this event he has two missed cuts and a 20th but he also has a ninth place, a second place, and a sixth place. So yeah. he has been a bit volatile, but he has the three top ten finishes, including a second. What I like the best and why I'm betting him, why I might end up using Justin Thomas in one and done as well, is that he has gained putting in four of those last six events. Basically, the four times he did not miss the cut at Riviera, he gained strokes putting. Poa is his best putting surface. So um, just kind of, again, fingers crossed that he has a good – putting me because if he does and the ball striking remains where it's been i, th- I think he's gonna win yeah he's gonna win sooner th- sooner or later and i was i was noticing on our in our league that uh what is it like 30 percent of the uh, contestants have already taken him so it's yeah kind of, kind of right, early so. in the season but they're remember last yeah. week we, we, we you know that was a big deal you know so you got your wish and he did yeah, he, he did end up being the most popular pick last week. And he didn't win, and that was big. He didn't win. Yep. So, yeah, in I our league, be... big surprise, but the, the leader only has one win. If, if the leader would have had two wins, I'd be like, what the hell is this guy smoking? <laughs> Give me that shit. But, All right, yeah, there were some guys that there were some guys that hit Wyndham Clark, right? I, it must be. Yeah, who else yeah, could it be? Yeah. I think, I'm, a, yeah. I'm a little bit surprised that nobody out of left field took Nick Taylor, to tell you the truth. 
Yeah, yeah, you were thinking in, in our contest where there's thousands of people that a couple would have, but yeah, no one did. Um, yeah, I think Thomas will be semi popular this week, but I think um, with all the big names in the field, I, I don't think he'll be most popular. I don't, he might, he might not even get to like 10% ownership. So I think he's a, a good one and done play this week. Okay, and then you got Morikawa and Shoffle. Now, Morikawa, uh, look, the only thing that scares you is his length, but yep. uh, he started his first two uh, appearances. A combined two under par. His last two appearances, a combined 28 under par. Sixth last year, second the year before that. He's coming off a of 14th at Pebble. So, yeah, uh, Morikawa is definitely somebody to keep an eye on for sure. But that is the only, that is the, the, the you know, because we have to nitpick because the, the, there's so many quality players to choose from. So, the nitpicking with Morikawa is the length and uh, the odds. Yeah, um, and you know he he's still in consideration for me. You know, if if, you, if I had to pick another in this group between Morikawa and Xander, it would be Morikawa for yeah. me. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know he's he's not a long hitter. He's not short. He's like average. He's like two or average length wise. And Morikawa might be the best long iron player in the world. So you know even though he's a bit shorter, you give him those iron shots from you know one seventy five to two hundred. He's excellent on those. So I, I definitely think he can win here. Morikawa is another guy who for whatever reason has putted well on these greens the last two appearances you know generally not someone you think of as a good putter but his last two times here he's gained strokes on the green on the greens big reason why he's hanging in there but uh still going to be hard for him to capture a win here he would break a lot of uh trends but then again this whole season we've had a lot of trends being broken so uh, he wouldn't be the craziest one uh Shoffle, meanwhile has only has only got one top 10 in six appearances so therefore why would we take him especially when his odds are similar to the two guys that just look a lot better than him coming in here in jt and morikawa and let's also keep in mind that how about this for these three guys shafle has not won since the 22 scottish open cantley who we're going to talk about next at 18 to 1 has not won since the 2022 bmw championship and justin thomas has not won since the pga championship in 2022 so uh, th- th- these are three guys that each, especially Shoffle and Cantlay, their odds are pretty low every week, and yet they haven't won for almost, we're, we're going on almost two years. So that is something that you definitely have to keep in mind. And by the way, Scheffler, for a guy that is six to one every week, he has one win since the players last year, and that was Hero. Why, why would you take a guy that's six to one every week yeah. when he's got one win? during the really the, the, the real season yeah. i mean the, yeah the i mean you know the, the numbers say he should have won five times but between that so i think that's why you know the, the, the bucks aren't going to give you a break on him um but yeah it's 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 honestly sad that he, he hasn't won more considering how, how good the uh td green play has been he'll put it together though he'll want he'll, he'll have a run he'll have one of those runs where he wins like four to five he just will he's just he's, he, he any better soon before this yeah, so, goes away. Yeah, so, so again, I mean, so for one and done, I do think Scheffler is in play just because of the prize pool. I'm I'm going to save him for Florida. I'm e- I'm either going to use him at Bay Hill or at the Players. Um, just I think you know he's obviously won. He's won both of those events, right? He did win Bay Hill. Yep. Uh, a couple years ago, and I just think uh, again, you know, those those have the, the high prize pools too. So I think I'm going to save Scheffler for, for one of those two. Uh, can't lay again. So he's eighteen to one. So is Homa and uh, Obear. So uh, you have. Wait a second. Did, did I hear that? Uh, is it a bear now? Because I heard on the telecast that he <laughs> actually told the the yeah. broadcaster how he wants people to pron- pronounce his name. I think I think he's I think he wants Oberg. Oh, he wants Oberg. I think Oberg is I, I think. Don't hold me to that. Okay. It keeps changing. Yeah. I, all right. I think, now I'm really Oberg. screwed up. All right. Yeah. I'll I'll get that just confirmation. Call, just just call him Ludwig. Yeah, Ludwig is fine. So anyway, uh, but I know you didn't see it, but uh, he's my top pick. So I haven't taken him yet, and I said I was going to wait until he yeah. got some you know, events under his belt against the big boys. And he did. And he almost captured pebble. I think might, he might've, if they would have played the final yeah. round. So I also have him high on my mm-hmm. list for one and done this week. Uh, he might be at the top of my list as of today. So I think this is the perfect time to jump all over him and he's trending perfectly. 
you know, look, he hasn't played here before. That's the crutch. We talked about the experience factor. But when you get these special players, these young players like that, it really is, usually doesn't matter too much that they haven't played here or there because they haven't played here or there anywhere. I mean, they're just new yeah. to a lot of places and they still can go out and, and, and win at a location. It's almost like a major venue. Uh, most of these guys haven't played at this event. Now, that's what they have the advantage over him. They've played here. But other than that, uh, he's just playing lights out. Yeah, could have won Pebble if they played around four. It was right in the mix at Tory if he didn't miss, you know, multiple putts inside five feet. He, he could have won Tory. And, and Tory is obviously a good, um, you know, correlating course here. Yes. Not that they're totally the same, but they're both, you know, long courses, Poa Green. So I do think if you look at, you know, guys who played well at Tory, that could be a good pointer for guys who are going to play well here. So, yeah, I mean, Ludwig winning would break some trends, but he seems like a guy who's, who's going to break quite a few trends in his career yeah and we mentioned this two weeks ago at pebble that this would be he he fits the way the season's going because he should break some that we're having trends broken every week why wouldn't he fit in perfectly to that uh by the way yeah. 10 of the last 13 winners at this event played at the farmers insurance open Okay. Didn't have to win, didn't have to play well, just play there. So that just shows you that uh, that does come into play. All right, so Cantlay, two top fives out of six. Um, so I was thinking about him, but um, and he's starting to play a little. I mean, he's coming up to the 11th at Pebble. He was struggling for a little bit. So he's somebody that, I, but again, I, I just I had other options. And Homa, look, this was an event we circle every year for Homa, well, the last couple of years. And he's been lights out four straight years in a row. He's the 21 champ. He was runner-up last year. Uh, but the problem is the last two events, he's been 66th and he's missed a cut. And that is a little unusual. He usually does not come into this event this kind of out of sync somehow. And that's the kind of reason why I guess the both of us have stayed away. Yeah. Um, and yeah, Homa's lost strokes off the tee in each of the last two events he's lost strokes on approach in three straight now the approach has been negative 0.1 negative 0.5 and negative 0.1 so he's you know just barely lost strokes it's not the irons have been horrible but it's just it's rare i mean you have to go back let's go back to, to midway through 2022 to find the last time he, he lost uh, strokes on approach in at least three straight events i mean it's interesting i i wonder if home is going to be less popular than we think in one and done because of that um, which could make him an interesting one and done play um, Cantlay is the other guy if I don't use Justin Thomas I think I'm gonna go Cantlay one, and, one done. and done I think yeah I think the fact and yeah he worries me a bit too because he's lost strokes on approach in each of his last two events now you know, one of them was at Pebble those that's only two measured events because they don't have shot tracker at, at uh, Spyglass so it's just, it was just the two rounds at um pebble beach and he he did come 11th there so he was coming off a good finish like you said he's been excellent here he's a good poa putter he has kind of the all-around game that you need to win here um so and again he's he's that you know higher end player i think you want to be using with, with the prize pool pool here so um can't can't kind of the other guy i'm um uh, considering for one and done yeah we'll have to communicate then because uh, obviously justin is uh one of my uh, potential options for one and done two. Um, and since we're so close to deciding whether we take him or not, we, we, we definitely don't want to take him the same week if we can avoid it. The odds will be yeah. uh, f better off for us if we can uh, take another player because, again, we do have other options. So we'll see. Okay. Uh, another player at, at this range we just mentioned before, Sam Burns, 20 to 1. That's the only reason why, that's the main reason that I, I can't do it because he's been so inconsistent yeah. here. He was third when he had the breakout year three years ago, um, and that looked really good. But then uh, the last two years, he's missed a cut with a combined 10 over par. It's like, but, but he's got six top 15s in his last seven with four top 10s, right. two top fives, third last week. So, yeah, uh, keep this in mind. Last year, he came into the event, this week's event, after he had an 11th and a sixth. So he was playing well last year coming into this event and still missed a cut by five over the 20 to one is what did it for me. I was like, yeah, I just, if he was yep. 28, 25, even 30, I'd consider it more, but I can't do it at 20. 
Yeah, and he, he, he did open in that 28 to 30 range, like first thing Monday morning. And I guess he's been a popular bet because he's way down to you know 20 or, or 22. And I, I think he's a bit overvalued at that price, so he's not in consideration for me. He, Burns is another guy um, I'm going to get on him as we get into Florida because, you know, he is a really good Bermuda putter. Po, yes. Poa is actually his worst putting service. Now, he's still a good Poa putter, but he's not as good on Poa as he is on Benton, especially not as good as he is on Bermuda. So when we get to these Florida courses, Valspar, he obviously has dominated, but I think even, you know, the players, he could be in consideration. Uh, API, he could be in consideration. So hopefully Burns waits uh, a couple more weeks before getting that win because I, I do want to start betting him because he's, he's playing yeah, really well. it's too hot right now, yeah. All right, now, out of the last, the next 11 players on the odds board, I'll just quickly show it on the screen. See, here, here is where we are right now. Okay, so, at, so out of those, of those next 11, we've got a bunch of them on our picks. So um, let's go with two players that are uh, next up, which are on both of my uh, part of my picks. Jordan Spieth at 25 to 1 and Adam Scott at 28 to 1. I just could not not take Adam Scott, especially since you didn't take him. <laughs> I don't yeah. like the fact that his odds have dropped 28 to 1. That's the thing that scared me off, almost scared me off. But I have to take him because of the fact that, just take a look right now. Not only does Adam Scott made 14 of 15 cuts here with 10 top 20s, 7 top 10s, 5 top 5s, 2 runner-ups, and 2 wins. But this is like the best stretch that he's had playing golf in a long time. Six straight top 20s, 5 top 10s, 1 top 5, 8th last week. That's worldwide. Um, so yeah, I mean, if, and that's why he has to, which he is under consideration for me at one and done, because if I'm ever going to take Adam Scott one and done this year, right. and I might not, but if I was, this would be the week that you should take him. If anybody out there is considering him, this would be the best week to take him. Um, and then back to Spieth, uh, even though Jordan doesn't have like a great resume here, he has six top thirties and 11 appearances. He did not make the cut last year, but as I mentioned, I think a couple weeks ago, Jordan in the, in the signature events last year, even though again, he missed the cut here last year, he, he has finishes of, of second, fourth, fifth, and sixth. So he's played really well. Most of the time, when he missed a cut, he missed a cut, I believe, by one stroke last year. So it wasn't like he had a really bad week last week. Um, and we know Jordan can be that type of guy. Um, you know, he could be off his game every once in a while, even at places where he's done really well. But I like the fact that he's coming in playing well. Eight straight top 40s, four top 10s, one top five, six last week. Speeth had the most Speethian tournament ever last <laughs> week. Just the amount of strokes he gained around the green and putting, he chipped in a few times, made a few long putts, just a classic speed performance. I, I think he, I, th this should be a good course for him. I know there's a lot of correlation too, between Riviera and Augusta, as far as winners, you know, you look at, you know, John Rahm obviously won both last year. There's a lot of other crossover. Bubba Watson has won at both places. Um, and Spieth obviously has been awesome at, at, at Augusta. So this should be a good spot for him. I did consider Spieth as a bet. Yeah. Adam, Adam Scott just got bet down too low for me. He, he opened at 40 to one on Monday morning at 41. I almost pulled the trigger. I was like, ah, 41 for Scott. I, I didn't pull the trigger within an hour. He was down to 30 to one. He keeps sinking and it, it makes, it makes a ton of sense. Like you said, awesome course history. He's playing really well. Um, guy just ha hasn't won in a long time and it's tough for me to bet someone at that number that, that hasn't won in so long especially for one and done because as good as he is an option he is there are going to be a lot of people that are going to take him I agree and, and you're with taking a, with, a with guy a huge and with a huge prize pool yeah i don't so, know if i want adam scott with a big prize pool so. yeah uh, all right now we go to uh, a couple other guys that are on our picks you have wyndham clark He's 35 to 1. You also have Thigala. He's 35 to 1. And I have Fitzpatrick at 35 to 1. So now we're getting into some good bargains here. And I just wonder how much longer Wyndham Clark is going to be around 35 to 1. Uh, but here's the thing, though. And until we see it this week, we do have to keep this in mind. If you take out the 60, he hasn't really done much at all this year. He just hasn't. His results have all been in the 40s and the 30s, and that's because he has had he had the one great round, which happened at the perfect time. He stole the win, mm -hmm. but we know how talented he is. We and it's just it, it, yeah. and it's looking like this could be a huge year for him. And he's sitting there at 35 to one. It's like such it's so tempting that it's almost right. like you can't not take him at 35 to one. 
Yeah, no, that, that's fair about you know the one excellent round. I think he is a volatile. Even last week, I bet him last week, so I was tracking him closely. Bad round one, excellent rounds two and three, and kind of disappointed again in round four. So like, yeah, he does need to kind of string four good rounds together, or at least one, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah, sixty to win these rounds. But yeah, I mean, I just, I, I, just, I just think his odds continue to be way, I know, too high. That's why I keep betting. I mean, so if you. Look at the last 12 months, players in this field. He's seventh best in the field, strokes gain total. In that stretch, he's won two elevated events and a major. Two of those wins came in California, which we are again here. You know, he won at Pebble and he won at LACC last year. Poe was his best putting surface. He's he's actually, again, I looked at um, who the best putters have been on these greens over the last five years. Wyndham Clark has been the seventh best putter on these greens. Um, he's fifth in this field in driving distance. We talked about that being important. He's 12th best in this field, strokes can approach. He's ninth best on those long par fours we talked about. And in three trips here, he's gone 17th, 8th, and 33rd. Yeah, and that that's good. Was, like, be, that was before he really broke out. Like, yeah. He's a better player now. So I think this yep. is a course that he likes. Um, so, again, I just think uh, the number's too high. And not a bad one-and-done option as well because nobody's going to yep. take him. Yep. So, all right. And then you also have Thigala. And Thigala – uh, he's played here three times. Yeah, he's his results have been better each time, including six last year at eleven under par. And he's also been trending in the right direction. So that's a good combination. Uh, one that I'm going to repeat in a little bit with another player or two. But in his last four events, uh, actually in his last two, twentieth and fifth. Um, so yeah, uh, we also have to keep in mind that he started the year with the runner-up at Century. So this has been a strong start for Thagala, and you're getting thirty-five to one. Yep, just another guy riding the hot form. Uh, Tagala is sixth in this field in strokes gain total in 2024. Um, he's a California guy. Um, Poe is his best putting surface. Like you said, sixth place here last year. That included uh, fourth best in the field in strokes gain approach. He was sixth best tee to green. Um, and again, going back to that uh, longer par fours with difficult to hit fairways, uh, Sahith was eighth on that list so i think you know that, again this should be a good course from he's really figured out the driver too i think one of our first shows of the year we talked about how his his driver had sort of been an issue it just gets wonky from time to time but um sahith has now gained strokes off the tee in four of his five events this season so if he can continue driving it you know well enough uh, we, we we saw waste management last week he can he can get really hot with the irons um so that's kind of what i'm hoping for this week all right uh, now my pick at thirty-five to one is Matt Fitzpatrick, and the same thing with with, with Clark and Thagawa. These are really good numbers, and that's really why I did it. If he was twenty-five to one, twenty to one, I wouldn't take it. But I'm getting thirty-five to one with a world-class player who's played here three times. He has two top thirties. He has one fifth-place finish. He's trending in the right direction. Um, so yeah, there there are some really good combinations there that I like. Of uh, but most importantly is the fact that I'm getting 35 to one. Yep. Agree. I think it's a good number. I like Fitzpatrick on tougher golf courses, which, which this is, he was second on that list of uh longer par fours with tough to hit fairway. So it's definitely a good spot for, for Fitz. Uh, by the way, another 35 to one uh, player to keep an eye on is Cam Young. And I, oh, I was yeah. close to putting him on the list. I just couldn't do it because he has only played here twice. So that's the negative, but 20th last yep. year and second, <laughs> The year before that, that's a combined 22 under par. And he's coming off at eighth, which uh, he actually, I, I believe, I didn't look at the stats, but I believe he had a good putting uh, performance at Phoenix because that's what I heard. And and, and look, uh, from what I saw, they didn't really show him a lot, which I was disappointed in. And by the way, I know we didn't have time, and we still don't have time to talk about it, but the coverage on Saturday was a joke. Yes. Everything was yes. about 16, and it was driving yes. me freaking up the wall. <laughs> So, I yeah, I was talking to my buddies about. It. I said it was the worst coverage of the season so far. Yeah, it, it's Just terrible. The amount of the amount of irrelevant shots we were seeing on sixteen. Yes, while not seeing the leaders, but um, and the two yeah, guys Cam- standing there, and you know, like, like it's some sort of big halftime show with the Super Bowl or something. <laughs> it's just so ridiculous. I do, I do like Kisner. He he's been good on the mic, Kevin Kisner. Yeah, and they need um, it. They need good uh, yeah. analysts. Yeah, Cam Young did gain five strokes putting last week. Also, yeah. was really good off the tee, as he always is. I and I did consider him. I was basically between Cam Young, Sahith, and Wyndham Clark, and you know, picking two of those three to round out the card. I I just 
legitimately have like serious concerns about Cam Young's ability to win at this point. I mean, we've seen it he's, multiple times. It's like Tommy Fleetwood, even, even on even Sunday, on, even on Sunday, like he, yep, he was right there in the mix. Um, and, and he was he, playing he part- so well the first three rounds. He had done a great yeah. job. He'd set himself up perfectly. And yeah. then he just lost his game. Yeah. So, like, you know, if he was 50 to 1, I feel like that'd be baked in more. But at 35 to 1, um, that's kind of why I didn't get there. But like you said, he's played well here in his game. Definitely fits the course. And keep in mind, he was third in Dubai. And he had, like, a three- or four-stroke lead, I right. believe, after the second day. And yep. lost that. And that's Dubai. Yeah. I don't know, DP tour. DP tour. That, that's not PJ tour. All right. Um, and, oh, one quick thing. I don't know who it was, the analyst, the, the broadcaster who did it, but whoever was broadcasting the golf event, I would have a serious talking to him. Maybe a producer whispered in his ear and told him to say it, but the idiot gave the score of the Super Bowl. Now, if you are going into the Super Bowl coverage – and you know it's a bad thing because they're watching the Super Bowl. But you know what? There are people who are watching golf who are probably recording the Super Bowl, you idiot. Do not give the score. So that is a reason why I think next year they might do uh, what uh, What was it? The week before, was it? Yeah. No, two weeks before. Pebble. Uh, to- Pebble. Uh, Tory, right? Tory went. Tory went Tory? Wednesday to Saturday, wasn't it? I think it was Tory, yeah. Cause, yeah, because that was the conference championship. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, they yeah. might they might have to do that. They might have to. So they, they they probably should just be safe. I mean, they got screwed obviously with the frost delays and the rain delay yeah. for that to go into the Super Bowl. But they probably should do that to be safe. All right, now one my, one of my last picks. I I, I have to do it because he's fifty to one. He started off at thirty five to one. Will Zalatoris. Willie. Really? Now Will come we? on now, check this out. Love it. In his first uh, event, first appearance, five over par. His last three appearances, four under par, six under par, 13 under par. He keeps getting better every time he plays here. Fourth last year. What is that combined with in his last three events since he's returned? In all three events since he's returned. Miscut, 34th, 13th. He keeps getting better. I love the combination. It's just similar to Thagala. And I'm getting 50 to 1. So yeah. I love that. I have to take him. Yeah, I think Ludwig... It- Oberg and Will Zell Torres will win the Genesis in their career. So if you want to just bet them every time we come here, I think you'll end up making a profit. Um, I wasn't going to bet Will at 35, but like you said, he's drifting. He's 50 now. I think people just aren't betting him. By by Wednesday, he might be 60. And I might have to pull the trigger on that. I I don't think he's like I, I don't think he's quite there yet. I don't think he's quite. He that shouldn't formal. be. Like he's he's yeah. getting. He shouldn't be. But he's getting close, and like again at fifty to one, that's different. It starts to become interesting to just take a shot that you know he is because because I look at the numbers, and even at Farmers, he came thirteenth. Like the approach play, it was good. It wasn't like vintage Will Zale Torres where he's like you know top five in the field approach. I think I think he's getting there. Um, I'm hoping he he peaks for the Masters. All right, very good. <laughs> what are his odds? I got him at forty. I think okay. forty or forty two. All right. And then uh, my the only other pick that we that uh, I did my my actual pick and our combined picks, and once again it's one of your boys, hundred to one, Luke List. Luke List, I, I I considered him as well. Yeah, why not? He won Sanderson Farms in October. He ended the year strong, five top twenty fives in his last six. He's been a little bit cold so far to start the season, but he's made cuts. And let's remember, he also won Farmers Insurance back in twenty twenty two. Uh, you just talked about the similarities of the two golf courses and his top two PG results uh, actually came between late January and late February. So that's exactly where we're at right here. He's got enough of the power game also. Yeah. So yeah, he only has two top 25s and eight appearances here, but we're looking for another player from, you know, outside the range that nobody's thinking about. And if it's going to be one of those weeks, just like it's been all season, then why not Luke List? Right. So in... Trying to find his his last appearance here, he was unbelievable. T to green, could not make a putt, which is you know kind of the story of Luke List. Um, trying to see what year was it? Last year or was it? Yeah, yeah, last year he came 29th. He gained 11 strokes on approach, lost seven strokes putting, which is absurd. Um, now he, he's at you know 
he's ga- he's gained putting here three of what is it three of eight career appearances which you know isn't great but he at least shown the ability to gain putting so yeah i um he i i didn't bet any long shots this week but list was the one i was considering at a, at 100 to one well yeah i mean you have to with the long shots uh because yep. you just have to the way things are going and so my top long shots uh, outside of the actual pick of list um is another one of uh i, I know you 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 talk about him more than i do even though we both uh, made money on him a few years ago when he won a pebble but that's Hoagie, our boy Hoagie, yeah. uh, because yeah. he's got three top twenty, three top twenties in his last four, sixth at Pebble, seventeenth last week, and his top two PGA results all time were between mid January and mid February. He was also fourteenth yep. here last year, which was his best finish. So it doesn't have the power game, but you're right. getting over a hundred to one. I'm also looking at the hundred to one shot area for for um, my boy Taylor Moore. Uh, I think he's still being disrespected. He started at 180 to mm-hmm. one. Uh, he's made nine straight cuts. He's starting to trend in the right direction, and he does have enough of the power game. Uh, okay. So uh, I believe, yeah, those were my uh, my top 100 to one or more long shots. Um, no pun intended. Uh, being more hoagie. Oh, the other two that were in the 80 to 90 to one range: uh, Harris English and Denny McCarthy. Again, the the the, the length is what. Uh, took me out of betting them, but uh, I, as, a, as far as my picks, but I put money on them this week for sure. Especially English. There's something about I like the fact that when you take a look at English, last year in the signature events, he actually played well. He was second at Arnold Palmer. He was third at Wells Fargo. He was 12th here. So he can play well in the big events. Two top 15s on this golf course, including last year when he finished 12th at 8 under par. He was also 10th in 2014, 17th last week, and four top 20s in his last seven, including 10th place finishes at the BMW and Sony. So I think he's playing well enough that he could be somebody to keep an eye on. And McCarthy's also done really well on the signature events, and we talked about that a couple of weeks ago. Uh, He's finished um, 14th, 25th, 8th, 2nd, and 7th in the signature events last year. And he's coming in with three straight top 30s, 14th last year here, which was his best finish. Yeah, I think Taylor Moore is my favorite among those guys you just listed. He's um, 14th in this field in driving distance, as you said. Um, he's also a really good poa putter, so I think he makes sense. I think I think Sepp Straka is the one I would look to in that range. He's 80-1 to 1 on DraftKings right now. Uh, mentioned him as someone who does well in those longer par fours. Um, you know, he has plenty of distance. He won last year. He has made the cut in three straight appearances here, including a 15th in 2022. So he has experience at least. So I think Straka at 80 probably be my favorite um, long shot alongside um, Luke List. Uh, Tony Finau used to be really good here. He's kind of cooled yeah. off a little bit. But um, and remember, he won Mexico and Mexico's next week. So yeah. there is that. But keep in mind, he has had one top five since the Mexico win. One. His his T to green numbers, especially approach, have been awesome the last two times out. He is putting horribly. Um, but you know is why I can't bet him at the number. Now he he is a lot better on bent grass greens than Poa. So I think once we get off these Poa greens, um, you know that could be the time to bat Tony Fina. Although you know, next week he's going to be like five to one in that field. Yeah, probably. Uh, and then other uh, uh, players maybe to keep in mind. I was thinking about Jason Day because you're getting good value at fifty to one, but he doesn't play well on this golf course except last year. He was ninth, and he's coming off a sixth at Pebble. So the combination at 50 to 1 was why I was like, well, you know, 50 to 1, but I, I, he did just didn't make my list. I do have to keep – how about this for somebody not to take this week? JT Poston. In, since his 17th finish in his first appearance, his next five appearances were gradually worse than the previous one. And the combination in his last five events this season – his results have been gradually worse. So the combination is the exact yeah. opposite of what you're looking for. A guy that's been worse on the golf course and worse on on his on his form. So you do not want to be taking uh, JT Post on this week. Anybody else that you yeah, like? De- uh, no, again, I, I'm sticking to the top of the board. I'm playing for the uh, long shot streak to come to an end this week. Yeah, with, with Post, I, def- I definitely like him on shorter 
course, it's not that he can't get it done here, but I don't think it's the best spot for his game anyways. And uh, Bradley was another guy that I was uh, uh, thinking about. Uh, he came close to making the cut. He's a little over 60 to 1. He's got five top 20s in his last seven. He did win the Travelers last oh, wh- year. What about uh, what about Hoygaard? You're not on Hoygaard this week. Well, again, uh, there's no, always... He hasn't played here. Yeah, he hasn't played here. Uh, he does have the power game. No question. Our uh, game and came second at uh, Torrey. Yeah. Uh, coming off the 31st at Pebble. So, um, yeah. I mean, I can't take him every week, but he is somebody <laughs> to keep in mind. And by the way, it all I would also... Look, if Burns gets off to a good start, then I would... if you With the live betting, keep an eye on him because that's the thing that we were concerned about was how he played the last two years. So if he's hot, if he gets off to a good start, keep an eye on Burns. And the same thing with, with Keegan Bradley because... He has four top 20s and 13 appearances, but no top 20s in his last eight. So I don't know what went on there, but if he gets off to a good start, uh, then maybe that's somebody also to keep an eye on. So there, there, there's a, and, and, and this is a tournament that you're not going to be able to make a lot of money uh, late over the weekend because you need to get off to a good start on this golf course. Uh, there just are not a lot of come from behind winners. Most of the trends and stats tell you that you need to be. Matter of fact, the last the last eight winners started the weekend inside the top six, and 27 leaders after uh, the third round um, ended up winning, including six of the last eight. And those are leaders. So you want to be up in front uh, if you're going to win this event so you don't have long i'd say if you're live betting this week i i think you 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 after thursday that's it yeah make some bets and then i'd stay away from it let's just hope for uh so for good weather a normal four round tournament and you know hopefully one of these higher end guys wins that we bet on yeah no delays yeah no postponements uh and like you said let's uh let's get ourselves a win just wrapping up the one and dones um uh, we both like JT as an option. Again, uh, Obear, Scott are my top two outside of JT. And Spieth and Fitzpatrick might might be there as well. So those will be my five. You like JT and Cantley. Are you, are you basically yep. going to make the decision on just those two? Yes, I think so. I did briefly consider Morikawa. I guess if you made me pick a third, it'd be Morikawa. Again, I'm really trying to stick to the higher end guys, like the guys that are 20 to one or lower in the odds. I think I'm going to stick to that range because it is, again, you know, $4 million to first place. All right. And uh, we'll let everybody know uh, who our uh, options are. Um, and we can let you know, of course, uh, if you join our Discord. So you can do that. We have a link in the description. If you want to know what our option uh, ended up being, uh, you can just uh, ask us uh, on Discord. You could also ask us any questions that you have for us here on the YouTube channel. Uh, we are posting the shows not only on uh, the uh, new Jan Stevenson Golf Channel, Tee Off with Jan Stevenson, but also still we're posting uh, a lot of the video on Prime Sports Network. So, Jared, appreciate it. Uh, we have another week next week, Mexico, so we're going to talk a lot about major futures next week. And it's a golf tournament that we can uh, make money on. It's, it's fine. We'll have, we'll have fun with it. Yeah, I wonder how many people are going to be using the one and done on Tony Finau next week. So, I will, I will, I won't be. I know just, it's just because he's going to be so popular. I'm gonna. Hey, maybe this is maybe Finau's. Mexico. There'll be you know, it's a deep. There's some players, so there's some good depth in a PJ Tour. You never know. Maybe if this will be a decent enough event next week where we can. I hope. Uh, um, I hope. I hope Kitayama plays. I think he could be good there. Yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not even sure if he's played there before. It's just that that name just came to my head because I know it's a it's a long, like a long, wide open golf course where just driving distance is pretty key. Okay. Um, yeah. Oh so. yeah. Kitty Kitty came second there in 2022. That's is that the same golf there course? You go. I think so. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah I think so. Yeah. They've only so played it, there so. twice, right? Yeah. Rom right. and Finau yeah. won. Yep. Yeah. Kitty came second to Rom in 2022. Okay. Yeah. So no defending champion this time around. But yeah, we'll uh, we won't have a lot to talk about next week. But hey, it, there'll be a lot of potential sleepers if you want to say. So we'll we'll try to do our best to hand you as many quality sleepers as we can on next week's show. We'll go over those majors, uh, and that should be a lot of fun too. You're gonna take the week off, uh, PJ National. Uh, so hopefully Jan will be sitting in with me that week, and then we're into March. 
And that's when things really start to, uh, to, to get interesting with the Florida swing. So, uh, Jared, appreciate it as always. Thanks, Jared. Good luck this week. Enjoy Riviera. Yes, everybody out there, enjoy it. And uh, we'll see everyone again next week.